Welcome to this WiseL tutorial. In this video we're going to teach you about working with the Visual Basic Editor application with an aim to writing some Excel VBA code. In this video we're not going to write any code itself, what we are going to do is show you how you can set up and work with the Visual Basic Editor. So I'll start by showing you how you can access the VB Editor from whichever version of Excel you happen to be working in. We'll talk to you about how you can switch between the, uh, the VB Editor and Excel itself with some nice quick keyboard shortcuts. And we'll also give you a quick whirlwind tour of the VB screen and explain what the main windows in the VB Editor application are for. Once we've covered that, we'll move on to show you how you work with modules, which are the places where you're going to write your code. So we'll talk to you about how you can create and remove modules, how you can switch between the various ones you've created, how you can rename them, and finally, how you set up the fonts and colors that you're going to use while you're actually programming. So let's get started. Before you can start writing VBA code, you first of all need to open up the Visual Basic Editor application. And the way that you do that depends on which version of Excel you happen to be using. If you're in Excel 2003, you can quite simply head to the Tools menu, find the Macro option in there, and then click the Visual Basic Editor option there too. You'll probably find that it gets a bit annoying having to go through this menu every time you want to get to that option. So alternatively, you could also display the Visual Basic Toolbar in Excel. To do that, you'd need to right-click somewhere at the top of the screen, where all the existing toolbars are, choose Visual Basic, and then I'm going to drag this and nest it up at the top of the screen like all the other toolbars. You should find on there that there's a symbol button you can click on to take you to the Visual Basic Editor, and there it is. To get into the VB Editor in Excel 2007, I first of all need to display the Developer tab in the ribbon at the top of the screen. And to do that, I need to go to the Office button at the top left-hand corner, choose Excel Options, and then on the popular page of the dialog box that I'm looking at, find the checkbox which says Show Developer tab in the ribbon, check it, and then click OK. You should find that there's a new tab in the ribbon now called Developer, and if you go to that one, the very first button on there, Visual Basic, clicking it will take you to the VB Editor yet again. If you're in Excel 2010 or 2013, you also need to display the Developer tab in the ribbon, but the way you do it in these two versions of Excel is slightly different to 2007. What you need to do is right-click on any existing ribbon tab, choose Customize the ribbon, and then on the dialog box which appears, find the unchecked box next to the word Developer, check it, and then click OK. Once again, you'll find the Developer tab appears in the ribbon, and if you select it, you'll be able to click on the first button there, Visual Basic, to take you once again into the Visual Basic Editor. Whichever version of Excel you happen to be using when you want to switch back into Excel itself, you can simply click on the first button on the VB Editor toolbar. It looks like a little Excel icon. If you click on that, it takes you straight back to Excel. You can also just use the taskbar, although you can't see it on my screen. If I hover my mouse at the bottom of the screen, it will pop up with the two icons related to the two applications. So you can simply click on either of those two to switch you between the two applications. You might also have noticed while I've been recording this little bit of the video that when you hover the mouse over certain icons, it displays a tooltip. So you'll see the Alt and F11 keyboard shortcut will allow you to switch backwards and forwards between the two applications. If you hold down the Alt key and then press F11, you'll have hours of fun switching between the two applications. So onto the VB Editor itself, how does the application work? Well, it's a fairly standard looking Microsoft Office application, although it uses the old school menus and toolbar system. You should be reasonably familiar with, with being able to click on menus to choose options and click on buttons on toolbars to make things happen. One thing that is quite different about the VB Editor compared to other Microsoft Office applications is the number of windows that it uses, little individual panels which display different bits of information. Now, these two windows that you can see at the moment, the Project Explorer and the Properties window, are the two that were always displayed by default. But there are many more available, and you can open and close them as and when you want to. If you close down a window or two, you'll always be able to find them again from the View menu. So if I choose the View menu, I can find my Project Explorer, which I've just closed down, and also my Properties window. There will always be a keyboard shortcut available to open these as well. So F4 for Properties, Control and R for the Project Explorer. 
It's also possible to move the windows around from their current positions, and you can do that by simply clicking and dragging on the title bar of a window. So I click and drag on the properties window, you'll see that I get a thin outline border which changes to a thick outline border as I undock it from its previous position. When I release the mouse I've now got a free floating window which sits can, can be positioned anywhere on the screen. You can also dock it to different positions, so if I start dragging it across to the right and watch for when the thick grey border changes to a thin grey border instead, I'll find that I can release the mouse button now and it will sit in and nest itself to another part of the screen. So you can feel free to play around with this, docking it to various regions until you find a nice layout for the way you want to work. It can be a little bit tricky getting that back into its original position actually, so I undock it from the bottom of the screen where it currently is, and then start to drag it towards the left hand edge where I think it should be. When it changes from thick to thin, if I release the mouse button, by default it doesn't actually go back into its original position, so the, the way, you, where you release the mouse button is very very important here, I've found <laughs> massive difficulties doing this in the past. So for this one, let's see if I can get it back in the right position, if I drag it down towards the bottom of that left hand panel, there we go, it goes from thick to thin there, and if I release the mouse button, I just need to change the size and the height of that window now by clicking and dragging in between them. There we go, back to roughly its original position. If we want to write some VBA code, we need somewhere to write it, and the best place for that in the Visual Basic editor is in something called a module. You can create modules in a couple of different ways. One method uses the Project Explorer window at the top left hand corner of the screen. If you right click with the mouse anywhere inside the project you're working on, you can choose to insert a module. When you do so, your module will appear as a separate floating window somewhere in the middle of the screen and your Project Explorer will create a modules folder with a little icon representing the module you've just created. Another way to create a module is to use the insert menu, so if you choose insert module that will create a module for you as well. So you get another icon representing that module and another separate floating window in the middle of the screen. You can close these windows down happily by clicking the crosses in the top right hand corner and you can double click on the module to redisplay it. You can also maximize a module by um, clicking the, the middle of the three buttons in the top right hand corner of its window. That will give you a bit more space on screen to write your code. If you do that for all your modules when you want to switch between them, you need to double click to switch between them. So you can see the little title bar at the top of the window here shows you which module you're currently looking at. Double clicking will switch between the different modules. Closing the modules down then is a case of clicking the bottom of the, the sorry the lower of the two crosses in the top right hand corner of the screen, and that will close down the individual module windows rather than the entire VB editor. You can also choose to remove a module or delete it. And you can do that by right clicking on a module, choose the remove option, and then be careful about which button you click on the message which appears. The temptation here is always to click yes whenever you see one of these sorts of messages from Microsoft. But um, the button you actually want to click here is no, you don't want to export the module before you remove it, well, unless you actually do want to do that. We don't want to export our module, so if you click no, that will delete the module one by one without exporting it. Another useful thing to be able to do with a module is to rename it to describe what's going to be contained within it. So if I want to do that, I'll need to create another new module first. So I'm going to right click in my Project Explorer and choose Insert Module. And then I need to rename it to give it a sensible label. Now intuitively, using Microsoft products, you'll want to be able to right click on that and choose Rename, but you'll be quite disappointed to find that it, the, the Rename option isn't there. So you can't rename a module by right clicking on it. Nor can you rename a module by clicking once on its name, pausing and then clicking again and waiting for the, the text cursor to appear. Um, the only way you can rename a module is by selecting it and then using the properties window at the bottom of the screen. So the properties window displays the properties of whatever object you select. If I select the, this workbook object, I get another longer list of properties. If I select the project itself, I get a simple name property. So I can rename my project as well as the individual modules within it. But all I want to do here is rename the module. I'm going to select that um, name, I'm going to call it something like the 
basics because that's what we're going to display. Now the names of modules follow some conventions, some rules. You can't use spaces in the names of your modules and many punctuation characters are disallowed as well. So if I try to include a space between the word the and basics and if I try to hit enter I'll find I get an um, error message telling me that's not a legal object name. So you'll find some people like me who are quite lazy tend to just to miss out the spaces altogether You'll also find another convention is to use the underscore character in place of a space. So that is another valid object name, the basics. Now we're nearly ready to start finally writing some code. But before we begin, there's one last thing that I think is worthwhile setting up. And that's the font that you're going to use while you're programming. So to modify that, head to the tools menu at the top of the screen, choose the options option from within there, and then on the dialog box which appears, head to the Editor Format tab. Now this page of the dialog box gives you all the settings required to modify the fonts you're going to use when you're programming. And the sample box at the bottom right hand corner shows you what it will currently look like. So if you don't like the standard setup, you can change things like the font that you're using. If you don't like Korea New Western, you can click on the drop down arrow and choose any other font installed on your computer. So you can choose Times New Roman, Arial, etc. You can even, if you really must, choose Comic Sans NMS to program in. I don't even know why that's a choice, to be brutally honest, but you could program in Comic Sans if you must. I'm not going to. I'm going to revert back to Korea New Western, which I think is a much more sensible choice. One thing that will help me um, with, with the videos is actually to increase the font size as well. So I'm going to increase up to 14, which is, should make it a bit easier for you guys to read what I'm writing on screen. And then one last thing that's worth mentioning here as well is the ability to change the color of different types of text. So the Visual Basic Editor represents different types of code in different colors. You can see the list on the left hand side of different types of text that you might see. So for example, if I click on syntax error text, you might be able to see that the sample has changed to be a bright red in color. So whenever you make a syntax error when you're programming, they'll be immediately highlighted in red text. To pick another example, there's comment text as well. If I select comment text, that turns a dark shade of green. Now this sounds like a very good idea, representing one type of text in green, one in red, unless you happen to be red-green colorblind, in which case that choice is particularly useless. So you can actually choose and define your own colors for different types of text. You can change the foreground color with a foreground option. I don't know why I've chosen red again, that was the one I'm trying to avoid. Sorry, if I go for yellow perhaps. And the background color you can change as well. So I go for maybe a, a blue background color. That should make different types of text stand out to make it easy for you to read. I'm just going to revert to also for both of these for the time being and then click OK and we're finally ready I think to start writing some code. If you've enjoyed this training video you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk